E Magazine presents an adaptation of the historical address by President Henry Christophe's government to the merchants of neutral nations, dated October 24, 1806, read by William Othon. The inhabitants of Haiti had scarcely thrown off the yoke of French tyranny when they have again been obliged to destroy another tyrant whom they nourished from within their own bosoms. At present, however, all the cares are turned to the culture of those valuable produce which the merchants of Europe seek at an immense expense in the remotest part of the globe. Our constancy has procured us in the greatest profusion a suitable remuneration for our severe labors. The riches of our soil offer to your speculations the most profitable and happy perspective. Our stores, full of all the productions of the Antilles, wait only for the arrival of your fleets to exchange the manufactures we require with those you are desirous of obtaining. If a system contrary to the advancement of commerce has formerly existed, that disastrous influence will now be done away with. The deceit has completely failed. The phantom has disappeared and with it have vanished all the fatal illusions with which it was surrounded. Far from placing any obstacles to the freedom of commerce in our ports, the new government offered to you greater advantages than any other nation can afford. The flags you may trade under will never be attended to. The guarantee of your property, your personal safety, and the observance of the most rigid justice in our concerns shall be assured to you on the faith of government. Wise and permanent regulations, privileges equal to the difficulties you may have to encounter in entering our ports, dispatched in expediting your vessels, and men of integrity at the head of the public offices. These are the changes which have taken place and on which you can rely. Government is well convinced that commerce can never exist unless advantages are reciprocal. Under this idea, therefore, they have already suppressed patent consignments, the duties on the price of produce, the privileges granted to the sale of coffee, as well as the obligations for forced shipments of sugar cotton, etc. Every person shall be free to act as best suits his interest in his speculation. The regulations above mentioned formed by ignorance will no longer impede the export of your speculations. You will no longer be shamefully obliged to place your confidence in individuals 
as unknown to yourselves as they were to the good of their country. Your friends, your own factors, will have the charge of your properties and government engages to give them all the protection and encouragement in their power. The sanguinary proceedings which have but too much marked the commencement of an atrocious reign and disgust by the renewal of the melancholic scenes that are past. Come then with confidence, trade into our ports, exchange the fruits of your industry for our riches, and be assured that in trusting to our promises, you will never find your confidence be misplaced. Thus, at the same time that government uses its efforts to procure for you the advantages of a lucrative trade, it expects from your agents, in return, the same friendly dispositions and good faith, which it will ever observe towards you. It fully relies also that the base and the Despicable conduct of the owners of a vessel called La Louisiana will not find any imitators among you, nor afford government reason to regret having placed full confidence in your honor and integrity. The ports of entry are the following. The Cap Francais. Fort Dauphin, Port de Paix, Gonaïve, Saint-Marc, Port-Prince, Okai, Jérémy, and Jacmel. To these ports you will have in your power to direct your shipments with safety and with the certainty of obtaining advantageous returns, the well-known correctness with which government fulfills its engagements is a solemn pledge that the treaties which will be formed with you shall be duly and rigidly attended to. Notwithstanding the misfortune that have preceded our independence and the disastrous wars that have been the consequence of it, the resources of government have always been on a level with its necessities. Such is the astonishing extent of our resources that even the vices of extravagance of the late administration have not prevented the fulfillment of our engagements. Judge then what will now be our expectations as well as your own. When prodigality shall be succeeded by a plan of wise economy and when a just appropriation of the resources of the country has fixed the rights of government and confirmed those of the individual. Hasten then to avail yourselves of the advantages which these favorable dispositions offer to you and which our mutual relation cannot fail of establishing on a solid foundation. Be not afraid of having your expectations of certain profit disappointed, whatever may be the number of your vessels trading to our ports, or however extensive your speculations may be. 
an abundant crop and produce of every kind already manufactured awaits your arrival and you are assured of meeting with a quick and ready disposal of your adventures. Done at the Cape, the 24th of October, 1806, the Chief of Government of Haiti, signed Henri Christophe, and by His Excellency, the Secretary of Government, signed Rane the Younger. Footnote, these views expressed in 1806, seven days after the Salines assassination, were clearly part of Pétion and Girin machinations that led to the infinite spiral of puppet presidents. They were wrong about Christophe, who was historically proven to be a loyal and incorruptible officer. This is Winnie Armstrong, chief editor of E-Magazine.